On September 26, 1780, a British army invaded Charlotte, North Carolina. 1,200 of these men were a part of the British Legion who were powerful and dangerous. The British Legion were joined by militia and camp followers. In total, 2,000 men invaded the city and at the head was none other than Charles Cornwallis. The 300-man Patriot Militia in Western North Carolina was commanded by General William Lee Davidson and William R. Davey, one of the most influential citizens in North Carolina. He helped start the first state university, was elected governor, and rose to national prominence as statesman who helped the United States avoid war with France. The 300-man militia Whig Patriots were guarding the courthouse at Trade and Tyron. These men were defending Charlotte against an army of warriors who were more skilled, heavily armed, and way larger than the Patriot militia. On encountering the British Army, Davidson ordered most of his small force to retreat, sending a detachment under William R. Davy to delay Cornwallis at Charlotte. Davy later wrote that his small force of 150 were joined by 14 volunteers under Captain Joseph Graham. Charlotte at that time was a town of about 20 houses built on two streets which crossed each other at right angles, at the intersection of which stands the courthouse. This is the present day intersection of Trade and Tyron Streets, a spot shaded by Charlotte's tallest skyscrapers. The wooden courthouse stood on eight 10 foot high brick pillars which were connected by a three and a half foot stone wall. This partially enclosed ground floor of the courthouse served as a marketplace. Davy placed one company under the courthouse and two more companies 80 yards ahead, under the cover of houses and gardens. The British soldiers formed a line of battle about 300 yards from Davy's men and charged. Colonel Banastray Tarleton's men were led by Major George Hanger. The Americans held their fire until Hanger's cavalrymen were about 60 yards away. The rebel musket fire stunned the British and Hanger's men reeled back in confusion. Davidson's men repelled three cavalry charges and Davy began withdrawing his men. Davy's troops moved back, covering each other and drawing away. Graham's men served as the rear guard and fought with the British soldiers that chased them. Four miles from Charlotte, near the Sugar Creek Church, the British charged and scattered the rear guard. Graham was critically wounded and Lieutenant George Locke was killed. After this clash, the British advance force left to join the main army of troops in Charlotte. Davy's men continued to withdraw until they hit the Rocky River, 16 miles from Charlotte and 4 miles from Davidson's army. The Americans had won, and by the end of the battle, 55 people had suffered casualties, 44 British soldiers were wounded and killed, and 5 Patriot militia were killed with 6 wounded. The battle at Charlotte was not the biggest battle during its time. However, the result of the battle was an American victory, and it marked the turning point in the war for the British. And that, my friends, was the Battle at Charlotte. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll be seeing you real soon. I'm your host, Philip, signing out.